kia ora whanau. This week I'm going to be touching on bananas, uh, specifically on banana propagation. So we're coming into spring in the southern hemisphere here and so we're right into banana planting season. We've been really fortunate up here in north of New Zealand with some really good uh, rainfall this spring so the ground's really moist so yeah we're really excited to start digging up a bunch of bananas and start propagating our next patches along the farm and also out at uh, Nararatunua where we also have that food forest that's in one of our videos as well. So yeah we thought we'd take this opportunity to also share with you guys how we do that and the method, the techniques, things to look out for and just to yeah kickstart hopefully a banana patch for each one of you as well. So there's two main varieties that we have growing here. We have the Ladyfinger Goldfinger, the Ladyfinger Misaluki. So both of them are quite fast growing. They grow, I mean, depending on the vegetation around them, they grow to about three to five meters tall and they fruit in about 18 months in ideal conditions. So the conditions that you optimally want for your bananas is free draining soil and fertile rich soil. And so you don't want uh, water logging or them to be in cold, their feet, their roots to be in, in the cold over winter. So you want that free draining. They love clay fill. So for all those people in clay, there is a chance you can still grow bananas. So this um, whole farm, as you've sort of probably heard countless times over our last videos, was once a sheep paddock, compact, hard clay, smothered in kaikuyu, and now look at this oasis jungle that I'm around. So it is definitely possible, and we're going to share with you some techniques as to how to propagate your bananas so they have the best chance possible to thrive in your situation. When we talk about propagation, we're talking about how can we grow, propagate from that plant and bananas being sterile so they don't have any viable seeds, our propagation method is via their root suckers. So as you can see in this clump here, we've got multiple different trunks, but they are actually all connected in a base clump below. So that's actually all one plant here, all connected called the mother clump and these are individual trunks that come up that then fruit and then once they're fruited they're finished they die back and then another sucker comes up so there's two main kinds of pups in a banana clump there's your water shoots and there's your true pups water shoots are basically like the excess water of the clump that gets sort of pressed out and expelled into a pup, it still would be able to be propagated and produce bananas but at a much longer period because it needs to establish itself and generate that energy enough to actually fruit um, prolifically. The true pups have, have the strength and vitality to actually push up and make it as a banana trunk to succeed its earlier generation. And the main ways that we can actually differentiate between a water shoot and a true pup is by its trunk formation and its leaf formation. So you'll find that a water shoot will be much more cylindrical in its trunk. actually have quite wide, fully formed leaves and it will be much less stable in the ground so you'll actually be able to shake it and it'll be quite wobbly whereas a true pup is more conical in shape so it's like a like a point like a triangle like a shoot and its leaves are very sort of knife like and fine so they don't actually fully form out into a foliage they're quite thin as they reserve all the energy to actually shoot up above the canopy rather than already being like a mini banana plant in dwarf and they are far more well rooted and stable in the ground so you can't wobble them as much as you can a water shoot. Those are the main ways that you can tell the difference but again all shoots will produce a banana plant and you can propagate any shoot 
but if you're wanting the most success possible and you're wanting an earlier harvest try and identify a true pup over a water shoot and you'll have far more success so when you're actually getting out a banana pup you're basically wanting to break the connection from the mother clump down here to the shoot so as I mentioned before it's all connected below ground and you want to you're wanting to actually cut through those connections to free that pup and the ways you can do that is with just a regular sharp spade you will have to sort of hit and slice through those connections however we have found that with using a spade because you have to lift it up and down to actually cut through the connection you're not always hitting the right the same spot which means that you're creating sort of a messier cut and you can actually damage a lot of the other pups or the the other mother trunk as well so it is possible it's just a bit more tricky and you do have more chance of damaging your overall clump especially if you're not sort of experienced or, or used to doing it so we would recommend um, investing if if there is such a thing in in each of your countries in such a tool like this slammer so it's New Zealand made uh, which is awesome and basically I think it was designed to take out bamboo shoots um, but it works a miracle for bananas as well basically it's this really heavy iron rod with a bit of a um, spade down the bottom and so you can basically position it in place and then you lift up this sliding slammer part here and actually slam down on the ground and that basically ensures that you don't have to keep lifting and trying to get the same spot you can find your spot and then head into it and break that connection without creating too much damage so really valuable and um, great investment for anyone doing more than a few pups so here you can see it's a really beautiful true puck so now I just want to scratch away a little bit of the of the leaf litter here just to see assess sort of where we're at and you can just see how beautiful that soil is so from hard clay soil to this gorgeous deep rich dark moist soil it's amazing so cool and look at all the life in it hopefully I don't cut too many of these guys all right so I'm basically just gonna cut around the pup giving a nice breath because sort of like an iceberg you don't actually always know how thick the pup's going to be below so you want to make sure you give it a nice spacious breadth as you cut around so you're not damaging too much of that main pup cut around it and leveraged my way upwards and see there we go so this is where we've sliced off the connection so somewhere down there you'll see that right here that's where it was connected to the previous trunk that we last cut down so that one would have fruited cut it down and all the energy was still coming to this next shoot here and then basically you want to remove as much of the soil as possible and also soil can carry certain nematodes so you want to try and limit the amount of spread of all that as well or any diseases that you might have in the system especially if you're getting bananas from somewhere you don't really know the area or yeah scavenging them from somewhere you just want to 
have them as clean as possible. So you're not transmitting any funguses, diseases, anything like that. And then basically we want to actually also remove all these roots as well. The reason we want to do this is we want to reduce the amount of transplanting shock as possible. We want to give it a full reset so that it can come forth fully and new rather than having to actually, um, yeah, uh, having to keep all these roots alive. They're much better to just make new ones once those are removed. And again, also limits the amount of diseases that we carry around. So the reason why I carry around two machetes, one's usually a blunter one and one's a sharp one, because we are cutting through soil, there might be little rocks in there, you don't want to use your good machete in this process. Basically, you're just slicing away these roots. And you want to be careful not to slice any eyes. So similar to a potato, where you get where you get these new growths from these eye points. So you can see I've shaved off all the roots. So this one doesn't have any existing eyes at the moment. Basically they sort of mainly around this area of the pup. So that's where you want to be most careful when cutting away at the roots. And then what we also do is we actually chop away the excess stem as well. So it's a full reset. We can plant it. Um, giving it a full restart rather than it having to carry on pushing this without fully establishing its new root system in its new environment. So we want to, yeah, give it a full reset. Basically, hold it up, cut it off, and that is what we call a banana pup. So this is what we would sell or propagate ourselves in a new location. So once you've cleaned up your pup, you also want to, before you transplant it anywhere or sell it, you want to actually soak it in ashy water. So basically just get a big tub of water, put a handful or two of ash, so from, from a fire, and mix that into the water with a few drops of detergent. The detergent basically just acts to, wake, uh, to break up the water tension and absorb the ash into the whole water. Just yeah, makes it dissolve faster and makes it actually absorb into the banana pup as well. Basically what the ash is doing is just cleaning it and it's killing off any nematodes that might be present on this pup. So you're not transporting any of those uh, little buggers. You're not transporting any nematodes. <laughs> Bananas are really greedy. They like a lot of manure, lots of nitrogen, so lawn clippings are actually perfect for bananas so if you've got a little clump in your lawn or something like that pile on that grass clippings they love that um, they love anything high in nitrogen so any manure that you might have around so chicken manure is actually the uh, best source of manure or any bird shit really um, because birds actually have the urine and the manure coming out the same shoot so you have the potash as well as the high nitrogen from the urine and also uh, fertilizing with ash as well. So same as, you know, we mix the ash in the water, but actually spreading ash over your banana clumps just before it's gonna rain is really good. And the rain can sort of trickle that down into the soil. Um, and they just love that. And also for the same reason, planting nightshades with your bananas is a great companion. So nightshades actually mobilize potassium in the soil making it bioavailable for your banana pups. So yeah, planting nightshades like tamarillos or if you've got inkweed um, growing up in your area, don't dig it out, actually utilize it, mulch it there. Um, planting ricotta peppers is this nice sort of perennial food crop that you can grow with your bananas. Um, 
yeah, tomatoes as an annual, just all the nightshades, tobacco weed, if you got it, <laughs> uh, great companion. The way that we plant these is actually burying them at least one foot underground. So if this is my soil here, I would dig a generous hole about 50 centimeters deep, 50 centimeters wide. And I would mix that soil up, especially if you're in clay, with something that like scoria or biochar or sand to create a more friable soil, a more free draining soil. I'd mix it all up with a generous uh, amount of compost as well. And then actually bury it on a 45 degree angle, about a foot below the top of your soil. That way the plant can actually, when it regrows out of this point here, it can actually shoot upwards and actually have a really solid anchor in the soil, which makes it far more resistant, uh, resilient against any wind damage or anything pushing it over, just far more stable on the ground. And any of these eyes that then come out here can also have that same anchoring system. If we were to plant them upright, they would be much more vulnerable uh, to being shaken around. The best times to plant your bananas would be in spring, so now for the people in the southern hemisphere, or early autumn, any time where you have enough moisture in the soil, it's not too hot and you don't, you're not in the middle of winter. Next, we're gonna talk about how to actually manage a clump and harvest a banana bunch. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and see you next week. Please comment on the comments below your feedback to this video, any questions you have. We love your encouragement and really take note of your feedback. So please do interact and we'll cater as much as we can so that this platform is for everyone. Have a beautiful week. See you next time. Kakite.